<laughs> was elected in 2007 to represent Georgia's 10th district and serves on the House Homeland Security Committee and the Committee on Natural Resources. He chairs the Oversight Subcommittee for the Science, Space, and Technology Committee, and he has reintroduced Ron Paul's audit of the Fed bill, so he's our sponsor in the U.S. House. Nope. So ladies and gentlemen, Congressman Paul Brown. Georgia. Georgia. The whole day through. Well, that's a good song. <laughs> Friends, government is out of control. It's become too big, too burdensome, too intrusive. It's spending too much, taxing too much, regulating too much, borrowing too much, sticking its nose in our business too much. Both parties are guilty. It must stop. When I was sworn into the United States Marine Corps, when I was sworn into Congress, I swore to uphold the Constitution against enemies, both foreign and domestic. Out of control government, out of control spending, have become our nation's enemies. I will not rest until we defeat those enemies. <laughs> Obamacare does all those things. It spends too much, it taxes too much, it regulates too much, it borrows too much, and certainly it's going to stick its nose in our business too much, we must rip Obamacare out by the roots and get rid of it. And my Patient Option Act would do just that. It's a 77-page bill that will repeal Obamacare and put in place policy that's market-based, patient-centered, and it will make health care cheaper for all Americans. It will provide access to good quality health care for all Americans. And it's going to save Medicare from going broke. And it will get the federal government out of making your health care decisions. And that's the kind of policy we need to put in place. Obamacare is going to be a tremendous threat to your fiscal well-being and your physical well-being. But one entity that is a tremendous attack on your fiscal well-being today is the Federal Reserve. As you were told in the, my introduction, I reintroduced my dear friend Ron Paul's audit the Fed bill. I did it within minutes of being sworn into this Congress. It's H.R. 24. The Federal Reserve is unconstitutional. And in fact, under the Constitution, the Congress is supposed to de determine monetary policy, not some quasi-governmental entity called the Federal Reserve. As you all know, it was established in 1913, 100 years ago. Since then, because of Federal Reserve policy, dollar bills that were available then are worth this, are less than this, less than a nickel today. And in fact, 1913, a gallon of milk was 35 cents. Today is 35. Three dollars and fifty-two cents. A loaf of bread in 1913 was a nickel. 
Today, it's an average of $1.42. The Federal Reserve is destroying the value of dollars in your pocket. It does a lot of bad things. It has too much power. We need to return that power back to the Congress, as it should be. It hurts the middle class. It hurts poor people. It hurts senior citizens on limited incomes. When milk and bread go up, poor people and seniors who are struggling just to stay alive are hurt the most. It lacks transparency, and that's the reason that audit the Fed is absolutely critical. In fact, there was a partial audit done in 2011, and it found that the Fed has distributed $16 trillion during the height of our recession, and they distributed that money to corporations and to central banks in foreign countries. They did this with, a, with no oversight from Congress, with no acknowledgement by the taxpayers. We've got to have transparency for the Fed, and it's absolutely critical that we do so. The American people deserve to know, because every single one of you, and your children and your grandchildren, are going to be affected by this policy. We just saw just the last day where they're going to continue their policy of printing more money. And what that does is it makes your dollars worth less and less, and our dollars are going to be worthless if they keep it up. And it also encourages deficit spending. When Congress and both parties see that the Federal Reserve can continue this policy that they have today, it encourages policymakers in Congress, in both parties, to continue to spend money that we don't have. I've introduced the strongest balanced budget amendment to the Constitution that there is. We must live within our means in the federal government. And a Fed, the Fed is a big part of the problem. It's a big part of the problem that caused the economic collapse of our nation because of their cheap money policy. We must audit the Fed. But furthermore, I want to get rid of the Fed altogether. <laughs> and in fact, I've introduced a bill to do so. At the same time, I introduced audit the Fed I introduced a bill to get rid of the Fed. <laughs> and a bill following that was to go to the gold standard and put our money with real value behind it. <laughs> the Fed is attacking our financial well-being. And another thing that's attacking our well-being and our sovereignty as a nation is the United Nations. I want to get the U.S. out of the U.N. and the U.N. out of the U.S. Totally. And that was another bill I introduced at the same time as I introduced the others. It's H.R. 75, the American Sovereignty Act. The U.N. has been a disaster. It's been an attack upon our freedom and our liberty. And in fact, you look at the things that the U.N. has been doing. It's been a disaster in how the international community has dealt with Syria. We saw recently where the president wanted to attack Syria. And I was totally a no about that idea. But Syria has been a failure. And Somalia and other countries. We see a threat from the UN 
on Agenda 21. Do y'all know what Agenda 21 is? We've got to get rid of Agenda 21 in America. And getting rid of the UN would do that. And a lot of people don't understand what kind of a threat that is to your liberty. We see the Law of the Sea Treaty. Y'all heard of that? If I was in the Senate, I'd vote no on that, and hopefully one of these days I'll be there where I can. In the Law of the Sea Treaty, a lot of people don't understand that we'll give control of the oceans of the world to the United Nations. But not only that, every drop of water that goes into the oceans will be controlled by the Law of the Sea Treaty. So that means every river, every stream in this country can be controlled by this tremendous threat upon our liberty and our sovereignty. The UN's Convention on the Rights of the Disabled will take rights away from you and from parents of how to deal with your children. The UN Small Arms Treaty will take your right, your Second Amendment rights away from you and subjugate them to those who believe that citizens should not own firearms. Our founding fathers believed very firmly that the only way we could protect ourselves from our own government, to protect ourselves from tyranny, is to make sure that citizens were armed. We must never lose your right to own a gun. And I'll do everything I can to fight to make sure that never happens. So friends, I've been fighting for liberty. I've been fighting for constitutionally limited government ever since I was elected to Congress in 2007. I am a Marine. I believe in this nation. I believe in American exceptionalism. I believe in the greatness of this nation that came from the ideas of personal liberty, personal accountability, an idea that we can control our own lives without government intrusion. Both parties are destroying that idea. Both parties are creating a government that's infringing upon our God-given rights. I will not stop fighting for liberty. And I appreciate your being here in that fight too. I'm the father of three, the grandfather of two, the husband of my wife, Nikki, for the, the last 28 years. I'm fighting for their freedom and their liberty, but I'm fighting for the freedom of your children and your grandchildren. I'm fighting for liberty for the future generations of America. We must not stop. You see, liberty is so precious. We must be ever vigilant in protecting it. That means we must have a revolution, a revolution at the ballot box. We must have freedom-loving, liberty-loving Americans all over this country engaged in this fight. I'm here tonight to enlist you in this fight. As long as I'm in Washington, as long as Georgians continue to send me to represent them in whatever capacity, either as a member of Congress, now I'm running for the U.S. Senate, and hopefully I'll be here in January of 2015 as a U.S. Senator. And I'll join my good friends, Dr. Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, and Mike Lee, and the fourth will be Paul Brown. But we need your help. We need you to go home and enlist everybody within your sphere of influence to get engaged in this fight. We're losing our liberty. We're losing our freedom. 
We're losing control of our lives. I'm fighting for my kids and my grandkids, but I'm fighting for your kids, your grandkids, and your great-grandkids. And with your help, we can restore liberty in America. With your help, we can restore constitutionally limited government, as our founding fathers meant it. Where we are operating here in Washington, under the enumerated powers of this document, which I swore to uphold and defend. But I need your help. Dr. Ron Paul was a gallant warrior. He's a dear friend. I praise God that he's endorsed my candidacy for the U.S. Senate. But he can't do it. Rand Paul can't do it. Ted Cruz, Mike Lee, Paul Brown can't do it. You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to do it to ask your representatives to pass the audit the Fed bill, to pass get rid of the Fed bill, to pass the American Sovereignty Act. And you have to tell your representatives if they don't do that. that we're going to make a change. I want to remind you, former U.S. Senator Everett Dirksen one time said, when he feels the heat, he sees the light. <laughs> Members of Congress need to feel a lot of heat from you and everybody that you can get involved in this fight. <laughs> and a bunch of them need to see the door. And the only way that's going to happen is if freedom-loving Americans, liberty-loving Americans get engaged in this fight. Support the right candidates all across this nation. When I was first elected, there were two of us in the House, Ron Paul and me, that truly believed in the original intent of the Constitution. Now we have others. Some will come speak to you. Justin Amash and Thomas Massey, who I just praise God that they're there in this fight with us. But we need more. And it's up to you to give us the tools that we need by fighting for liberty and in teaching your family, your friends, and everybody within your sphere of influence about how far we've gotten away from those principles that have made this country great. The principles of limited government, the principles of free enterprise system unencumbered by government taxes and regulations, the principles of personal accountability and responsibility, those personal liberty. Will you help me? Will you help me? We've got to restore liberty to America, and with your help, we will do that. Thank you all so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.